Hi everyone, my name is Tasha. I'm the owner and lead certified bookkeeper of Mitten Honey Bookkeeping and welcome to today's mini training. Um, these are free five to 10 minute long trainings that we give out uh, just to help you grow your business. So let's get to today's topic is picking brand colors. Um, I actually really enjoy this topic. I absolutely love colors. I love designing them to fit different brands. Um, I'm not so good at like the logos themselves or anything. So that's not like a field I would go into ever. Um, but I do have a lot of fun with it and I've gotten pretty good at it. <laughs> I've helped out a lot of clients with it and a lot of family members starting up their businesses. And of course I've done my own, um, this business that I am in love with and a previous business that I did attempt and was not as happy with. So Lots of learning that I get to pass on to you guys. This training is perfect for anybody who is just starting out, looking to get going, wanting to run with this, um, looking to do a rebrand, or um, even if you're like seeing that your sales are dwindling and things just aren't heading in quite the right direction, branding might be something to look into. Maybe you aren't attracting the right customer for your product. So you can take a look at that and see if that's it. So... Let's get going. Picking colors. First things first, you have to remember colors evoke emotion and we want to evoke the right emotion to attract that ideal customer, correct? So if you're a party planner and you want them to be super, super excited, use those big, bold colors. Even neons might work um, for that, I could see. If you're more like us and you provide, if you do massage therapy, obviously you're gonna want calming, cool colors. Um, and if you're trying to reach more women, then maybe use you know pinks, purples, yellows, light blues, colors that women would usually be attracted to. It's just the nature of the beast, people. If you're trying to attract more men, maybe the deeper forest greens and the dark blues, even black sometimes works really well there. Um, if you're trying to go for, you know, dark, deep word, you know, masculine, or I think of masculine when I think black, I'm sorry, it's just who I am. <laughs> so, you know, th that, that kind of a grit, black and the darker colors are going to work better for you, however. So you know, keep that in mind as you're going through the feelings that those emotions evoke. Um, you can ask, I spent, when I came up with the colors for Mitten Honey Bookkeeping, my family was so sick and tired of hearing from me. It was ridiculous. I'm like, well, what about these ones? Does that work? Does it do you like these colors? Does it, how do you, how do you, is it readable? Okay. And that's the second thing. You want it to be readable. So we're going to go over the different types of colors that you need for the different things that you're going to be doing. And during the whole process, I want you to be creating not just one little social media post and see if that works because that's not enough, okay? You're gonna be creating hundreds of social media posts, letterhead, business cards, portfolios, I don't know, like so many different things and they all have to land on these colors that I want you to create at least three, if not up to like 10 things with the colors before you land on them, okay? And make sure that it's readable, it's easily understood and that you know, there's no blurriness or confusion. Colors aren't too close to each other or things like that. And that you have enough flexibility with them that creating those things is easy. Because if it's difficult and you have colors that are too similar and don't work on top of each other and stuff along those lines, it's actually going to make the process a lot harder. And which in the end is going to cause more stress for you in running your business because you're not going to want to create those printables. You're not going to want to create the website that has to be color coordinated or the hundreds of social media posts that we all do every day. Okay, so you're going to want that. You're going to also want to be happy with the colors. You're not going to be like, oh, my word, do I really have to use this yellow again? No, you really, really want to love them and be like, oh, yeah, I get to be in my happy place. So make sure it's a happy color for you too. Okay, we're doing good. So everyone asks me how many colors. I personally recommend six. This comes from personal experience. I've tried doing four. People sometimes say three or four and it's never enough. You always need those extra two to pull from. So the first two I would start with will be your main colors. These are the backgrounds I use on pretty much every single thing I do. These are the colors I use for any pictures or shapes or borders or 
anything. Like you can see it in my office here. I have the green pillows. I have yellow pillows over here. I have the yellow curtains and everything. Pretty much everything I buy for my business is in one of these two colors or at least is close, okay? The B is all yellow and green, as you can tell. So those are my main two colors and I use them everywhere. So make sure they evoke the feeling that you want and that you are happy with those two main colors and then you use them everywhere. Okay, those are the first two that I go to every single time. The next two, you want to be more of like the background colors, sub colors, whatever you want to call them. We have a cream and a light blue that we use and you don't see them very often because those I use mainly for if I have to print something here in the office real quick, the green and the gold tend to use a lot of ink where my cream, which is a little calmer, but still in the same general area as our yellow, um, will print a lot easier on my printer. Um, so I use it for that upon occasion. I use, or we'll get some designs where the photo that you wanna use or the image, the graphic, anything along those lines, requires three or more colors and so you need more. So I've also found that the blue works really well in subtext if I'm trying to like highlight a certain word or I like it for hyperlinks. When I create a link in there that's clickable, I like to use that blue so they know that it's clickable but it's still on brand. But that's just me, I'm a bit particular. <laughs> Uh, I also like using the blue for and the cream for accents upon occasion um, and things like that. So they're not used as often, but you still need to be happy with them. They still should go with your brand. And that honestly, those two colors have saved me so much time and energy trying to be like, oh, well, it, this won't work with two colors, I need a third, blah, blah, blah. I can just throw my other two colors in there and it works great. So it honestly saves a ton of stress coming up with six rather than four. The last two, and I do recommend finding them in this order. So you find your first two, those are your main two colors. You use them everywhere, easy peasy. Then you find your background or sub colors and so you can pull from them as needed, okay? Then you go through and you find your last two colors, which will be your wording colors. You're gonna want one that stands out and is more for titles, that bold text, things along those lines. And then one for more like body text, maybe some subheadings upon occasion, depending on how you lay it out, things like that. Oftentimes your body text is gonna be black and that's fine. That can be one of your colors. We do use a dark gray because it's a little less harsh and we're going for that calming feeling. Um, we also use a dark navy blue because it does still stand out because we're doing readability. <laughs> um, but again, it's less harsh than the black. So I try not to use black too often unless I absolutely positively have to. Um, black and white are also kind of give me colors. You can use those anytime, anywhere. I personally think as long as you don't use like the background, the black as a background and then suddenly you can't read your text or something like you can always do black or white text or a line or a subheading things like that um but then the next step is once you have those two colors just go through and test it and like I said test it on like 10 things at least three or four okay I realize that that is a bit time consuming but you're going to be stuck with these branding colors for hopefully years and years and years to come um, as long as they are working. And so if you go through and you test them out and you find that creating things is super easy, number one, two, it's easily readable and three, it evokes the emotion you want and you're dead on. Oh, four, you love them. <laughs> we want to make sure you guys are happy. So that is my tips and tricks for picking colors, six of them. You want two main ones, two sub ones, and two for text, okay? And you can always use black and white a bit in there as well, if needed. Uh, and it works really, really well to stay on brand. So that's what I have for today. Hope to see you guys at the next mini training. Bye.